we have as our guest another former Mormon, and we're going to discuss the self-defeating practice of becoming worthy. This is just another works-oriented and impossible part of Mormonism's road to heaven. And never forget that the fundamentalists are living and believing in true and original Mormon doctrine, which includes striving to become worthy. So belt up or change your TV channel, because we don't compromise on the message that God has for this culture if we get to heaven by grace through faith in Jesus Christ only. As I said, our guest tonight is a former LDS woman. She was raised in a very active mainstream Mormon family in Salt Lake City, and she came to know the true Jesus Christ in August of 2009. She now has a ministry called Mormon to Christian. I'd like to introduce and welcome to our show tonight our guest, Connie Radden. Thank you, Connie, for coming. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. And we have a good conversation. We're ready to talk about it. This Absolutely. Word, this issue is, is really is something to, to discuss with our viewers. Tell our viewers a bit about your ministry and how they can gain internet access to information of your ministry. Okay, well, as a concert pianist, I uh, share my story of how I came out of Mormonism with a little piano concert. I play a little and talk a little and play a little and talk a little. And um, I would love to come and share that with any church in the Salt Lake Valley that would like to invite me to come and, and share that. I do have a website. It's um, www.mormontochristian.com. It's kind of lame. It's just <laughs> so I have the domain name. I'm not really good at the website, but you can contact me through that website. Um, also part of the ministry, I took up Brigham Young's challenge to compare the LDS religion with the Bible. So every month I write an article on a blog comparing the Enzyme Magazine, which is a magazine the leadership of the Mormon Church sends out to all their members. And I compare what they teach in that with the Bible. So you can go to that, um, the site that was just on the screen. To, to uh, read your blog. Yes. And it's, it's a very good, very good comparison well, thank you. that you have uh, about that. So we, I would suggest that our viewers would go to that and read what she's written. Uh, when I first heard your story, um, I rang a chord of interest because many people in this culture especially women, understands the dilemma of trying to become worthy. And like most faithful women of polygamy as well as faithful women in Mormonism, you often experience depression and failure as you strive to become that perfect, worthy woman. Mm -hmm. And while at the same time, because you were a Mormon, and you were diligent to be obedient to the rules and ordinances of the Mormon gospel, you often felt pridefully worthy. And so you were living a life of contradiction. Yes. So would you please briefly tell our viewing audience your story of why and how you left Mormonism for true Christianity? Sure. Well, um, I always believed Mormon doctrine my whole life. I never questioned the doctrine um, until 2009. And it was a, two years ago. I think it was July of 2009. Mm -hmm. My husband and I started watching a show on TV called Heart of the Matter with Sean McCraney. And he compared Mormonism with biblical Christianity. He had been Mormon for 40 years. So some of the things he said, I really understood. He could really relate to me when he knew things about Mormonism that I knew were true. Mm -hmm. Well, he, um, he talked about all the, the deceit that went on in Mormonism and, and the lies that we were told. And at first, I did not like listening to it. I was offended. And I thought he was just had been excommunicated and was just bitter and was out to hurt the church. And, yeah. But I was curious, so I kept watching. And uh, fortunately, he taught biblical Christianity as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was teaching that we are saved by grace. And saved meant everything that heaven had to offer, which I used to term the celestial kingdom. Mm -hmm. That was the same thing. We were saved by grace alone, mm -hmm. through faith alone. That, that just sounded so nice to me, but it just couldn't be right. <laughs> Because it, I, I was raised um, believing that, um, and this is a quote from Spencer W. Kimball, he said the greatest lie Satan ever told was that we're saved by grace alone through faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's the greatest lie you told. Yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> well, at that point, I was kind of believing both of those things. I still believe Mormonism, but I was believing that grace was free, too. So I was starting to go a little crazy, I think. Yeah. And um, that's what... Um, took me to my knees and I went into my bedroom and I just 
Ask God to show me what was true. And whatever he told me, I would do. I had no idea what being a Christian meant. I didn't have any affiliation with any Christians. So I didn't know if I'd be wearing white robes, giving out flowers at the airport, or <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. But, you know, a part of me believed that God would send the bishop over to my house and tell me to come back to church, and I'd go back to the temple. And I was ready to do that, because I really didn't know which one was true. Well, God didn't answer me through any warm feeling. He answered me through all this information started coming available to me. Books, and websites, and people, and just all these resources started coming out of the woodwork. And um, all of it was showing me that the Mormonism that I had been raised on was not true. Mm -hmm. So I just want to share one of the things that was kind of a final straw for me. Um, I learned a lot of things, but in my research I found um, an interview done by Larry King, and when he was interviewing the current president of the Mormon Church, Gordon B. Hinckley, he was prophet at the, the current time. current president at yeah. the time. Yeah. And, uh, they talked about polygamy. So polygamy actually was one of the final deal breakers, not in the same way, I didn't experience it the same way you did in living it, but the topic of it. And this is, this is what um, was said. Larry King asked Gordon B. Hinckley, first tell me about the church and polygamy. When it started, the church allowed it. And Gordon B. Hinckley says, when our people came west, they permitted it on a restricted scale. Okay, now, I knew that polygamy was a doctrine. Mm -hmm. It's in the Doctrine and Covenants. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have a problem with it. I was raised believing that the Lord had taken it away for a time and it would come back. We didn't know when, but the Lord would bring it back when the people were ready. Mm -hmm. And we would for sure practice it in the celestial kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I was okay with that. It was doctrine. I knew it was doctrine. And I knew that the pioneers practiced it a lot. So that wasn't really right, that it was just on a small scale. Right. No, and then um, he says... The figures I have, this is Gordon B. Hinckley, are between 2 and 5% of our people were involved in it. It was a very limited practice and carefully safeguarded, and in 1890 it was discontinued. Okay, now, right there I had a problem because as an 18-year-old, I was married in the Salt Lake Temple. We were divorced a few years later, and he remarried, and it was sealed to a second wife in the Salt Lake Temple. Well, he's divorced from her and is married to a third wife, and I believe he intends to take her and be sealed in the Salt Lake Temple. So they're still practicing it, just not, you know, in, a, in an earthly way. Right. It's a spiritual right. polygamy. So, yeah, so that didn't sit right with me either. And, um, but he said that the president of the church, he said the man that occupied the position that I occupy today went before the people and he said he had prayed about it and worked on it and received from the Lord a revelation that it was time to stop, to discontinue it then. That was 118 years ago, and it's behind us. So Larry King said, um, when the word is mentioned, you, th you hear the word polygamy, you think of Mormon, right? And Gordon B. Hinckley said, well, you do it mistakenly. They have no connection with us whatsoever. They don't belong to the church, and there are actually no Mormon fundamentalists. And Larry King said, so you condemn it. And he said, I condemn it, yes, as a practice, because I think it's not doctrinal. It's not legal, and this church takes the position that we will abide by the law. When I read that, that was kind of the final straw because either the prophet of the church didn't know what doctrine was or he was lying. Right. And either way, I could not trust because he was prophet when I was mm -hmm. all through, well, late 20s. And the prophet would know the doctrine. You would think. Yeah. So <laughs> if you didn't know the doctrine, you couldn't trust him. Right. But I think he knew the doctrine and he was lying. So that was kind of the final straw that just said, you know what, I can't trust any of it. So. I think that caused a big stir with quite a few uh, people in the church.